The Geek Show on CSR 97.4. Good evening and welcome to another episode of The Geek Show. Uh, I'm Joe Lennon. Joining me, Alex Branson. Hello. And he's actually here today. It's James Miller, everybody. Hello. Woo! Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, nice to have you here today. Uh, we'll be talking be a little bit about why you weren't here last week mm. uh, very shortly. Um, but yes, hello. Welcome to another episode of The Geek Show. Hopefully uh, this one's going to go even better than uh, last week's. Uh, just a quick piece of housekeeping before we get going. Um... Please, today, if you're going to get in touch with us, please go on to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash geekshowcsr, um, because, uh, oh no, it's CSR Geek Show, isn't it? It's Geek Show CSR. You're already liking the page. Well, we're off to a great start, uh, because we can't get messages via text because our phones are off and we aren't checking our personal Facebooks. Um, mm. So that would be <coughs> quite useful to have that. Um, right, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, The World's End, the new film from Edgar Wright, uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Uh, we're also going to be ta- doing a quiz based on the Cornetto trilogy as a whole uh, that Alex mm. and James will be taking part in and you at home can be playing as well. Uh, and finally... Uh, Sorry, James is going to do uh, a retro corner based on film, remakes, reboots and sequels. Um, That is all coming up uh, through the duration of the show. Uh, But first of all, let's introduce our Play Us Out sections for today. Um, So last week was a huge success. Uh, My song Flash uh, won by a landslide. um, Three votes. Naturally, it was the best song. (laughs) Um, It got like six, man. It got like five. Why are you be hating? (laughs) Um, Okay, uh, today my choice uh, is... I'm going for an easy one because I want to win again because I love winning. (sighs) Uh, It's the Pokemon theme song. Here is what it sounds like. Okay, that was, uh, that was Pokemon. Everyone knows that. Uh, if you want to vote for that, make sure you go on the Facebook page and let us know. Alex, what is your choice today? The cool thing is I'm going for another nostalgia property. I'm going for the Transformers, the first movie, the theme song from that, and I'm hoping to beat you this time. I feel like a five-year-old right now. Yeah, it's lovely. It's awesome. Okay, and James, what have you gone for today? Last week you had a really obscure choice, <laughs> so hopefully this week's choice is slightly less obscure. Uh, it is a little bit less obscure. Um, the song I have gone for is the theme from Red Dwarf. <sighs> I love the show. really enjoying the new red dwarf by the way just thought i'd throw that in there yeah. we won't get into a discussion about that now but new red dwarf is really is really fun um okay that is our play us out songs if you want to hear any of those at the end of the show uh, then do get in touch with us on the facebook page it's facebook it's either geek show csr or csr geek show i knew it five minutes ago and now i've forgotten it but through the course of the show we'll do a com- we'll do a confirmation on it's that geek show csr it's geek show sure. csr thank you james uh right okay so let's kick off uh with a bit of geek news um so today um our first piece of news uh for Sherlock Series 3, a new villain has been cast. Uh, actor Lars Mikkelsen, don't know if he's any relation to Mads Mikkelsen of Hannibal fame, uh, will be playing Charles Magnuson in the new season of the hit BBC One show. Um, Magnuson is most likely to be an adaptation of Charles Milverton, who was a villain in one of the Arthur Conan Doyle 1904 short stories. Uh, so that looks to be very exciting. Uh, I'm very excited about new Sherlock. Guys, do you watch Sherlock? Yes, yes, of course I do. Yeah, yeah. What, I mean, have you? Do you watch the old? Do you watch old Sherlock or do you prefer new Sherlock? Um, see, I'm not really sure about about the So you're talking about old old Sherlock? We're talking old old Sherlock. I think they're two very different programs. Two they're different both are pretty things, great, right? And it's difficult to choose, but I love both mm. of them. Yeah. Uh, John Williams, in another piece of news, has confirmed that he will be composing the music for the upcoming Star Wars Episode 7 uh, for Disney. Uh, Star Wars, uh, he will be, he announced this at the Star Wars celebration in Essen, Germany. Um, He says he hasn't seen the script, uh, but that the new score will combine uh, classic themes uh, with new music as well. Um, Fellas, we happy that John Williams will be doing Episode 7 music? Very happy. Yes, very happy. I mean, there is, seeing as J.J. Abrams is directing, uh, I thought that maybe uh, Michael Giacchino would be 
um, composing because he's composed for Lost and for Fringe and for Star Trek and for Mission Impossible 3. He's a very good composer, but I don't think anything can beat John Williams, can no. it? No, no, not at all. Wouldn't <laughs> be the same without him. It wouldn't be the same. In the same way that Man of Steel felt like it was lacking John Williams' score, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and in our final piece of news today, um, James Miller, he's in the studio. He made it oh, on time. Yes. Well done, mate. Uh, tell us, tell us your, uh, tell us your story. Tell us what happened to you last week. In brief, uh, what, my train was delayed at first. Uh, I got to Ashford, and then I accidentally got on a train that took me to Folkestone. I got off at Folkestone West, and my phone died, so I couldn't tell anyone. I had to go all the way back to Ashford. Then come to Canterbury. I mean, it wouldn't have been a problem if we were on Folkestone Student Radio. No, but sadly, would, we're not. But at the time I got in, it was five to seven, so I didn't even hear the show um, at that point. Well, we missed but you, buddy. Thank uh, you. It's nice to have you here. Uh, right. Oh, wasn't that nice? That was very nice of me. Yeah. I'm very sweet. Um, right. Okay. So, uh, and that is this week's Geek News. Uh, so. Uh, today's main discussion, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, The World's End, we'll do a quick spoiler-free review of it, we'll talk about the film, and then we're going to talk about the Cornetto trilogy as a whole, um, how Edgar Wright's films have influenced um, other films that have come out, how it's influenced British film, um, and then we'll be talking uh, briefly about where, where maybe they're, go they're going from here, because uh, they've, they've all got big careers ahead of them. Uh, so, uh, let's, kick, uh, let's kick things off. Uh, the World's End. Uh, James, I'm going to come to you first, because uh, you saw it first. What did you think of The World's End? Uh, frankly, I was quite disappointed. Uh, I did say, I think, before, uh, why I was... I don't know. I think it's because I had such high expectations from watching Shaun the Dead and Hot Fuzz. Right. Um, I just don't think it was as clever. Um, like, humour-wise, it just didn't... Just, I think I got a couple of chuckles out of it, um... I, I don't know, just... Okay. Alex, you told me that you had a very different response okay, to... Okay, um, for me, it, it, it sits in the middle in terms of cleverness. For me, the cleverest is Hot Fuzz. I think it's a very interesting look at village life, and obviously. Mm. Um, and I think that World's End was a very clever look at the world... It seems. Yeah, it I, seems we're going to we're going to touch on this in a minute because I have a few really specific thoughts about the world's end. But you're right. I see. I know where you're going. So, there. on the whole, did you? I mean, did you like the film? Did you enjoy the film? I did enjoy it. I thought it had some very good fight scenes, and I think Man of Steel could have learned a few lessons from I it. I think absolutely it could. I uh, I'm going to just throw it out there. I loved the world's end. In fact, I would. I, I think I might have to see it a few more times, but I would say there's a case to be made that it might be my favourite of the three. Oh, all right. Um, just, just, put, just putting this out there, I didn't hate it in any way. You I didn't hate I it. I still liked it. We don't have hate on this show, do we? No, I still really enjoyed it. Um, okay. I just didn't think it was... It, it didn't meet my expectations for what it was going to be. Okay. Well, okay, so that's interesting. Three very different responses there. Um... Let's come back to this um, to this discussion about action. Now, I thought, um, and we'll, we'll come back to action again later on when we're talking about where Edgar Wright's going from here. Right. There's some very interesting developments with him. I thought the action in this film was the best staged out of all three films, without a shadow of a doubt. Yes. Because it was framed perfectly, it was shot perfectly, um, there was a real sense of coherence about what was going on. I mean, did you, how did... I mean, James, as, as a, a lesser fan of the film, what did you think about the action yeah, scenes? Yeah, the fight scenes were really good. Um, very Scott Pilgrim, Pilgrim-y. I think... Well, he, yeah, he I mean, that was another Edgar Wright film, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so. he took a lot from that um, and put it in. In hindsight, I wasn't a massive fan of the Scott Pilgrim film, and I know... No, in hindsight, I, I agree with you. In, in, in sort of second, third watching, I didn't really like um, uh, Scott Pilgrim quite as much. Um, but... But the fight, the fight scenes in the World's End are, are really clever, and there's one bit um, involving a urinal, uh, which, which <laughs> oh. really took me by surprise, because um, without wanting to give away spoilers, there's something not quite right in Newton Haven where the film takes place. But that's spoiled in the trailers. So. Is that spoiled in the yeah, trailers? It's spoiled okay, it that's fine. Okay, well, I don't, I don't, I, I want to try and keep people as fresh as possible because uh, I saw her with a friend who knew nothing about the film today, and she loved it. Um, I. I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought the action was incredible. I also thought Simon Pegg was great because he plays a character who is, for the, the maybe two-thirds of the film, he's a really unlikable person. And I'm sure you're meant to think that, but in so many of these films, 
Nick, uh, Simon Pegg is the, he's, he's the protagonist, he's the guy that we empathise with, he's, he's mm -hmm. our sort of, he's our window. And in this, we re we're really not supposed to like the guy. What did, I did, really, did, really liked him. Did you like him? I liked him more than usual, cause, uh... Cause he was I, playing I, a jerk? Are you, yeah, well, I guess I'm kind of a jerk, and therefore I kind of, I kind of empathise with what, what he was doing, which was... This James, what did you think this, of that? This is the one film where I really didn't relate to him. I really couldn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I felt really. Uh, I mean, that might have been their intention. Uh, I you know, think it so. was. I think we're not supposed to like the guy, and I think I think one of the strengths of the film for me, anyway, was that uh, the the fact that it, by the end of the film, I really liked the guy and, and completely empathised with him, completely knew where he was coming from. I thought that was one of the greatest things. The film sets itself a really difficult challenge. It says, we're going to make you like this guy by the end of the movie. And 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 it, it for me, it did. I mean, it really did. Alex, you liked him anyway. Yes, yes, of course. Um, did you like him I, less I think as the I, film I, went I, on? I think, or? Um, I didn't like him less. I liked him in a different way. Like, he became slightly more amicable. Okay. Um and less like the sort of person I'd want to go and have a beer with. Yeah, no, I would not want to go out for a beer with that guy. I, at the beginning, I definitely would. He, he seemed like a kind of a head case and that would Because be... the, the, idea, the idea is, he's sort of... Um, Gary King is Simon Pegg's character and he's stuck... He's kind of stuck in the past, isn't he? As far as he's concerned, when he was 18, it was the best time of his life. He'd just mm. finished school, he was having fun with the lads, going out every night, he was having a great time. And now he's sort of 40, he's not doing quite so well. Um, the introduction narration is sort of explains the the basis of the movie and it's set in quite a nice framing device which again I won't give away um, but yeah it, he's clearly not in quite such a good place is he no uh, uh, shall we have we got have we got a clip from the film to play let's have a let's have a little uh, let's have a listen to uh, the trailer uh, from the world's end they haven't seen each other in 20 years I'm free do what I want. But tonight, they're returning to their hometown to finish the ultimate pub crawl. This is our chance to finally conquer the Golden Mile. Twelve pubs, twelve pints. And this time, they're going to make it to the last pub, the world's end. Let's go! Come on. What did you say, Sam? Newton Haven has been taken over by robots. Did you believe him? Head back to London. A, we're all drunk. B, we've got blood on our hands. It's more like ink. We've got ink on our hands. <laughs> From the creators of Shaun of the Dead and Hot Buzz. Let's climb down the drain pipe. I got a better idea. Climb down the drain pipe. The only way to survive the night what? is to make it all the way to the world's end. Where are the others? They're blending in. Hello, I am a robot. <laughs> We're just five friends on a night out, <laughs> having a good time. The world's end. That's the world's end there. Uh, trailer, uh, pretty exciting audio trailer, I thought. Oh, uh, yeah. Makes me want to go and see the film again. <laughs> um, right, so I said we come back to uh, the, the, the idea of the action scenes. Now, um, Edgar Wright, the director of this film and the rest of the Cornetto trilogy, um, he... Uh, he will be directing uh, the Ant-Man movie for Marvel in 2016. Yeah. Now, having seen these previous films and including The World's End, and there's quite, there's quite, there's a there's a big bit of CG at the end of The World's End that's really impressive. Um, yeah. Now, Ant-Man's going to be quite a CG-heavy film. The action scenes are going to be quite impressive. Do we think? Do we think Edgar Wright can can handle a big superhero movie now? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know if he can handle a big superhero movie, but I think it's going to be interesting how he. Uh, well, no, I, that's not in, what I meant entirely, but uh, I think that he'll do an interesting thing. I think he'll delve more into the character. Okay. Um, and there's probably going to be a little bit of heavy symbolism in there as well. I'm, I think there will be. I'm not the biggest Marvel fan, but uh, is is Ant Man is Ant Man supposed to be slightly? I don't know. I thought the film was going to be He's slightly. The, um, it's going to be comedic. Comedic, yeah. It'll be. I think it'll be like a, a an Edgar Wright film within sort of like Marvel constraints. I think that's why with, they with picked some, him. As, as I said last week about some dark stuff, because uh, yeah, yeah, right. absolutely. And that's pretty dark when you get into him. Okay. Okay. Well, um, we'll uh, we'll be coming back uh, to uh, we'll be coming back to this uh, in a bit when we do the competition. Uh, but for now, uh, let's play record. <laughs> the Geek Show on CSR ninety seven point four. That was Imagine Dragons, um, round and round. We're here till seven, it's The Geek Show, 
And I want to say hi to Rob and Ben, Steve and Alan, that's my brother and my dad, and Emily, my girlfriend. Um, hi, Emily. Hello, Emily. And here's Alex. Um, we're going to do our weekly feature called Who Would Win This Week? <laughs> Um, and we are going to be discussing, and we'd like you to discuss, um, who would win out of famous duos, since we're talking about, um... The World's End. World's End, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost. Technically it's a trio with Ed Edgar Wright, but they've done other He's stuff together. He's behind the camera. Yeah, so, um, so duos. Let's go for duos, not trios. Okay, uh, so duos. Um, I would like to, uh, submit first, uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca. Um... I think uh, Star Wars in Across the Galaxy, um, they would be Star Trek unstoppable. They shoot first, um, they pull limbs from droids' sockets, um, they're pretty much unstoppable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Apart from if you freeze them in carbonite. So, they're, I mean, they're, personally, they're, they're my favourite uh, movie, movie duo anyway. I don't know about, I'm not thinking about games or TV or comics mm. here, but specifically for movies, Han Solo, Chewbacca, uh, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm suggesting. Um, I'm on the spot really. Um, film-wise, maybe Jay and Silent Bob? That's Jay and Silent the, Bob, they're, they're, they're nice. They're, they're very good. That's then, really nice. Uh, if you're, yeah, if the, if the fight becomes quite meta, then they do then they do quite well <laughs> um when we say simon Pegg and nick frost mm -hmm. are we talking about them as actors or them in a character um i d i don't know i i do in i do enjoy them as characters but i think i think we'll go for the actors yeah we'll go for the actors for the, for the guys came, okay for so how would how would how would simon Pegg and nick frost beat you they'd beat you with cleverness surely they're, 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 they're incredibly intelligent they have quite a lot of resources to draw upon i'm um, sure they have lots of props from from their films that they've kept and i'm pretty sure that they're, they're pretty good at the meta too they could uh, in fact here's we could we could allow simon Pegg to play his uh, alter ego from his autobiography in his autobiography which i really enjoyed he splits the book up into two halves one is him talking about how he became an actor one is a fictional autobiography about him as like a like a private detective with a robot dog uh well it's a robot dog butler uh, <laughs> and it's great it's so good you sh uh get a chance if you get a chance to read it read it um i Right, so, I mean, surely Han Solo and Chewbacca would, would beat them, though, because they'd be... Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, first of all, would be, um, would be completely stunned by, 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 Chew, by Chewie and Han. Y yeah, yeah. Potentially. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll change my answer then. Okay. Legless and Gimli. Legolas and Gimli, an unlikely pairing. Mm. Ah, I think, have we, have, have we got that, I think? I think that sounds, I think that sounds like a good, um, like a good, a good combination. Legolas and Gimli versus Han Solo and Chewie. Because yeah. Peg and Frost would be completely lost. They would be, oh, that rhymed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they would, they would be going for autographs more than anything They else. would be going for autographs and they would, they would get punched and stuff, so, <laughs> um, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do so well. Uh, any other, any other, I mean, can we think of any other pairings? I'm, I'm only thinking of superheroes and their classic sidekicks. Batman and Robin, bit boring. Flash and it's, his it's sidekick. Boring? It, well, it's, a, it's, it's classic, but I don't really want to... But sometimes classic's the best. I, I, if, if I was going to choose a superhero, I would have gone for someone a bit more obscure. Uh, if I was going to go for a video game uh, pairing, then I would say Jack and Daxter. <sighs> I'd say Ratchet and Clank. I grew up with the Ratchet and Clank games. Oh, see, this is... Okay, this is where, this is where we differ. I think Jack and Daxter is infinitely better than, than Ratchet and Clank. James, have you played either of these games? Do you know uh, what I'm talking about? I've played Ratchet and Clank. But uh, not Jack and Daxter? I don't think I have, no. I haven't played no. Jack and Daxter. Well, that's your problem. If you played Jack and Daxter, then you'd throw away your Ratchet and you'd, you'd trade your Ratchet and Clank <laughs> no. games in any day just to play Jack and Daxter. I've only played Ratchet and Clank 1. I've got a Christmas one. Okay. I, I kind of think it, the second one's kind of poor compared to the first one. Mm. Shall, we, shall we throw it to a vote then? Shall we throw it to a vote and say uh, Legolas and Gimli uh, versus... Uh, Han Solo and well, Chewbacca. That's, that's 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 not that's not just a fight. That is a fight between two. It's between two, two uh, fiction universes, two sides of geekdom. Yeah. Uh, it could it could get nasty on Facebook. Fancy versus sci-fi. Uh, mm. James, what was the Facebook page again? Because I'm. It was. I need um, to learn this. It's it's the. Sorry, I made the it. The Geek Show CSR. The Geek Show CSR. So it's Facebook. Is there a the? No, it's just Geek Show. Facebook.com 
forward slash geek show csr good right okay if you haven't memorized that now then type it in and then put it on like a little favorite on your browser uh that's a that's a great way to do it and then you'll never forget in fact just make it your home page and then every time <laughs> you come online you'll uh be able to see all the nice stuff that we've updated for you quickly i just want to give a shout out to adam holding in spain he's listening in spain at we've the got wow we've got international listeners right now indeed that's, that's pretty cool now I'm just thinking about, oh, now I've been totally forgotten. Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds? Now, I don't know why it came up, but International triggers Thunderbirds in my mind. Well, maybe we'll, maybe, well, maybe that can be your Play Us Out song for next week, the Thunderbirds theme. Not the busted dun, dun, one. Dun, 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 dun. That's Captain Scarlet. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what about Captain Scarlet and what's but, his partner called? Captain Blue? There are many captains There's of lots various of captains. colours. <laughs> okay, um... Something a little bit more interesting than Batman and Robin. What about Superman and Batman? Which is a comic I've been reading, which uh, you should all check out. Talking about um, duos, uh, uh, Ben Paul Stroud says the Chuckle Brothers. Of course, <laughs> Ben Stroud would. Ch uh, I think the Chuckle Brothers would surprise everyone and annihilate everyone. Okay, here we go. Right, this is what we're going to say. Uh, vote on the Facebook page, which is James. Uh, the Geek Show CSR. Brilliant. Uh, who do you think would win between? The Chuckle Brothers be versus Legolas, Gimli, uh, Han Solo, and Chewbacca fighting on a four-man team. I think it's going to. So there's a four-man team. It's a four-man team versus the Chuckle Brothers. We've gone there. That's interesting. Anyway. I, don't, I, don't, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this change in format. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, unfamiliar. Just, Play I have no idea you. what world this this fight would have uh, occurred. But I'm in my it. brain, it does. That's what world. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's move on uh, to our competition for today. Uh, okay. Let's let's play some appropriate music. Lovely. That sounds competition-y. Okay, right, so here's what's going to happen today. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys ten questions um, about the Cornetto trilogy. It's including the World's End, but don't worry. Um, all of the World's End related questions are relatively spoiler-free, so don't worry about that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to get the guys to mark that, to write down their answers on paper and not say them out loud right away. If you're playing at home, feel free to tag along and play along, rather. Uh, don't uh, don't use Google. That's cheating. Uh, play it properly, please. I, I would like to point out that um, at home you are allowed to shout your answers at the radio if you shout really want. Shout them at the radio, scream them at the radio. We can um, hear you. If you, uh, if you get all ten right without cheating, uh, we'll trust you and we'll mention you on air. But don't, don't cheat. Why would you cheat? Um, so... <laughs> So here we go with question one. Lads, are you ready? Yes. yes. Audience, are you ready? Oh, yes. they're ready. They're ready. Um, okay. So question one. Uh, in Hot Fuzz, uh, which actor plays two roles? That's which actor plays two roles in Hot Fuzz? No cheating from Alex's girlfriend in the corner oh. there. She helped me write the questions. Got to cover up my paper here. Cover up your paper. Yeah, we don't want any cheating. We know what Alex is like. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in Hot Fuzz, what type of plant does Nicholas Angel obsess over? Um, you can, if you get, like, just what basic type of plant it is, I'll give you the point. And I'll right. give you a high five afterwards if you get it absolutely correct. Uh, question three. Uh, name any of the records that Sean and Ed throw at the zombies in the garden. If you name any of the records they don't throw at the zombies, you don't get a point. It's as simple as that. It's only... There are three records that, they're ne that are named that they throw at the zombies. Uh, okay. If you get any of them, you get a point. Uh, question four. Uh, what song plays during the Winchester fight scene in Shaun of the Dead? This is an easy one. Mm. Alex is singing it to himself, trying to figure it out. Uh, that's what song <laughs> plays during the Winchester fight scene in Shaun of the Dead. Uh, question five. Uh, what video game does Zombie Ed play at the end of Shaun of the Dead? In the shed. Oh. I'm just rhyming all day. This was, uh, this was one that, uh, Katie came up with. Say hi, Katie. Hi! <laughs> She's here in the studio. Uh, right, uh, question six. Uh, what real supermarket chain uh, was the fight sequence in Hot Fuzz setting. What actual, uh, 
supermarket chain was it set in? Uh, when we give the answer, of course, we will say things like other supermarkets are available because we don't want to promote <laughs> one supermarket over another. For, Very for fight scenes. Don't, for don't, fight scenes. Don't start fights well, in any supermarket. Yeah, don't, don't start a fight scene anywhere if you can help it. Um, other places question, are available. <laughs> question seven. Uh, what does Nicholas Angel drink in the local pub in Hoffers? It's a rather nice mm. it's a rather nice drink. Apparently lots of old people drink it. Uh, that might be a stereotype, I don't know. Right, and um, now we're going to come to the World's End questions. Now, if you really, really, really don't want to hear anything about the film, then just turn off your, your volume for and like And your internet, a and minute. your TV, and... No, 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 don't do, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. This is, we have to be careful of people who want to listen, but don't want to be spoiled. So, uh, like, check back in like a minute's time. Uh, question eight. What is the name of Gary's car in The World's End? Oh. That's a good one, right? That's pretty easy. Yeah. It's, yeah. Because it's exactly what I'd name my car. <laughs> uh, Did you just look at my paper? No, Question? No. Oh, oh. James, are you cheating? No. Oh, we better no. not be cheating. Oh, right, our it. producer Rob will keep a close eye on them, and if there's any cheating, then I'll disqualify, I'll disqualify them. I can do that, I have the power. Question <laughs> nine, what is the name of the special beer offered at pub number one in the World's End? It's also offered in a couple of others, but there's a specific reference to it in, uh, in the first pub. We got that? No. Uh, the special beer offered at pub number one in the World's End. If you've not seen the World's End yet, by the way, and you want to participate in this, give yourself a mark out of seven for the first two films. Uh, it's, it would be unfair to uh, expect you to know uh, all Unless of you're psychic. Unless you're psychic. In which case, call In me. which case, don't be sitting listening to a radio show. Go out there, make some money. Uh, right, finally, question ten. Uh, how many pubs are there in the World's End? And how many of them can you name? You'll get a bonus point uh, for each pub you can name. But there is one of them that has a slightly rude name. Uh, so we're going to... You can tell me that, but um, omit the uh, the rude word that's in it. Um, and other than that, uh, that is the end of the quiz. Um, so any questions uh, there, gents? Anyone you want me to go over quickly? Mm -hmm. You got them all? What was number two again? Number two was, what plant does Nicholas Angel obsess over in Hot Fuzz? Oh. Okay, well, you've got a few minutes to think about it, because uh, we're going to be going to a track now. Uh, so let's uh, play a record. Oh. The Geek Show on CSR 97.4. Coker in the Butterfields, Warriors on CSR FM there. Uh, we're here till 7pm. Uh, it's me, Joe, Alex and James. Hello. Um, Hello. Yes, uh, that's a great song. Uh, played at Lounge of the Farm uh, over the weekend. Uh, Rob, you went, our producer went there. He, he had a nice time there. He got a special hat um, and he loves it. Uh, right, okay, so... Uh, we've had the quiz. We've had quite a lot of uh, people messaging in uh, about the uh, about the, the Play Us Out feature at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, James, do you want to just give us a quick rundown of how the votes are going so at far? At the moment, according to my count, um, Pokemon has two votes. <laughs> and Red Dwarf has five votes. And Transformers has five, vo five votes. Oh, so it's very close. Make sure you at keep the your moment, votes. At the moment, it's a tie. Okay, make sure your I votes think keep if it, coming If it comes in. down to tie, it should come down to the quiz. Yes, okay, oh, there yeah. we go. If, it, if it's a tie, it'll come down to who does best <laughs> in the quiz. Um, can I just remind you all, in case you weren't listening at the start of the show, please make sure um, that if you're sending us stuff, please don't send it on our private Facebooks. Please send it all to uh, the appropriate part of the Geek Show Facebook page because we need to be able to read it all together, otherwise it just gets all confusing uh, and it hurts our tiny brains. Um, so, uh. Uh, with that in mind, uh, should we do the results of the quiz? Uh, right, okay, we've had a message in from Rob, who's given a lot of the correct answers. Now, I will evaluate how he's done uh, at the end, and I will send him a message back. So, uh, rest assured, Rob, and possibly Nick, if he's helping you, uh, <laughs> I, will, um, <laughs> I will let you know. But, here are the answers uh, for the quiz. Question one, uh, who plays two roles uh, in Hot Fuzz? Uh, I'll ask you first, Alex. Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey is correct. He plays two policemen. Uh, do you know their names? No, I do not. No, I don't know off the top. James, do you I know their names off the top of heart? Um, no. No? Okay, uh, we'll find that information <laughs> later. But yes, that's the correct answer. Question two, uh, what plant does Nicholas Angel obsess over in Hot Fuzz? Uh, James, do you know what this is? I have no idea. I put gillyweed. Uh, that is completely wrong. <laughs> that's Harry completely Potter. wrong. I just went to say <laughs> gillyweed. That's the first thing that came in my head, <laughs> but I know. That's Your girlfriend's <laughs> going to be very proud of you, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex? Japanese peace lily. 
Oh, it wasn't Japanese, but it was an Indian piece. Lily, so Indian I piece, will Lily. give you the point for that because oh. that's oh. very, that's very close. Uh, have you both got? Have you both got two points? Or? Yeah, I've got one point. He's got one. I've got two points. He's, he's got, got one. I've okay, got one. all right. I should keep a better, better track of these. Um, question three: uh, Name any of the records that Sean and Ed throw at the zombie in the garden. Alex. I remember a discussion about the Batman theme song. The Batman soundtrack is correct. James? I've got the Batman You've soundtrack. also got... Okay, correct. C can we have a quick high five? Yeah. That was a high <laughs> five there. Um, right. You could have also had Dire Straits or Sade. Yeah, I remember that uh, as well. You would have not got a point for saying Purple Rain, uh, Sign of the Times or Stone Roses. Uh, so congratulations <laughs> for not saying any of them. Uh, congratulations if you got any of those at home. I sound like Richard Osman from Points there. Um, question four. What song plays during the Winchester fight scene? You should both know this, right? Yeah. What is that song you it's are? Don't Stop Me Now. It's and I couldn't now name it without wing. singing it a little bit. I had, to, <laughs> I had to lean away from the mic. Question five. Uh, what video game does Zombie Ed play at the end of Shaun of the Dead? Uh, James, do you know this? I said Time Splitters. I said Time Splitters. I recognise the health bars. What did you say? Time Splitters? Time Splitters. I'm going to give you both half a On point. On the PlayStation 2. Too. So you can both have half a point there. I um, always thought it was a, a time splitters because the health bars are very distinctive. Right at home, if you said if you said time splitters two, uh, then you get a whole point. If you said time splitters uh, without a two on the end, uh, then you get half a point. I think that's fair. If you said future perfect, then half points. Well, I guess. Question six: uh, What real supermarket chain uh, was the fight sequence set in in Hot Fuzz? Uh, Alex, I believe it's the same one you work in, isn't it? It's Sainsbury's. That's incorrect. It's James? incorrect. Summerfield. That's correct. Dang. It is a Summerfield. But of course, as we. Uh, <sighs> foreshadowed earlier other supermarkets are available look at that we're obeying our, our rules uh question seven what does nicholas angel drink in the local pub alex um he drinks cranberry juice i believe he does he has a nice drink of cranberry juice uh james did you say cranberry juice uh, i did originally i said ribena but i changed it last moment it is right uh, other other squashes are available oh, we're yeah. gonna have to keep doing this <laughs> other uh, liquids are available other liquids are available <laughs> um Okay, now it's the, uh, now it's the oh, World's no. End questions. So, again, turn off your radios for like a minute, uh, if you don't want to hear anything from the World's End. Uh, if you are one of those people, um, give yourself a score out of seven, and, uh, post it on the Facebook wall. And, uh, actually, we'll get our producer to put a, a scores thing on there, and then you can comment on there and let us know. Uh, because he's, of course, happy to do that. Uh, <laughs> he gives me a dodgy smile. Question eight, what is the name of Gary's car in the World's End? James, what did you say? I completely forgot. I know it's something along the line, but I put the beast. Okay. But I know it's not. Alex, it what is, is the, the beast? Answer? It is the beast. It is the beast. That's correct. Oh. Yes. Yeah, well done. <laughs> I was, I, I, I was going to put a funny answer. I was going to put something like Millennium Falcon or something. The love machine. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, right. Well done. Well done for going with the beast. Yeah, Congratulations yeah. if you got that at home as well. Question nine. What is the name of the special beer offered at pub number one in the world's end? Alex. Crowning Glory. It is called the Crowning Glory because it's fit for a king. Uh, <laughs> James. No, I didn't get any. I just put beer. You just put beer. Well, it is beer, <laughs> but you're not going to get a point yeah, for no. it. Uh, finally, question 10. How many pubs are there in the world's end? Uh, James, what did you say? I put eight. That's incorrect. Alex? Twelve. Twelve is the correct answer. And, uh... Can you name, uh, Alex, I'm going to go with you first, because I, actually, no, James, I'll go with you first, because you've probably got less of them. Well, uh, I put, obviously, The World's End. The World's End is one of them, so bonus point. I put The Sawyer. The Sawyer is not one of them. And I put one, which is another name for a rooster. The, the, oh, you get half a point for that. Right. Okay. Okay. Alex, we'll come to you. I had The World's End. The World's I had End. The First Post. The First Post. The Famous Chicken. Yeah, The Famous Chicken. Uh, the Thirsty Dog. It's oh, you can have half a point. What is it? It's the two-headed dog. Ah, um, I said King's Arms because there's probably something like that in there. That's interesting. It's you uh, give yourself another half a point there. Um, and hole in the wall. The hole, hole in the, in the wall, wall is correct. Uh, right. So now we're going to go through the whole list. Make sure to give yourself uh, half a point if you got it mostly there, and a full point if you got it bang on. So, uh, in order, uh, the pubs are the first post, the old familiar. The famous chicken, but it's not the chicken, but you know what we mean. Uh, the cross hands, the good companions, the trusty servant, the two-headed dog, the mermaid, the beehive, the king's head, the hole in the wall, and the world's end. Let's just run through those quickly again. The first post, the old familiar, the famous chicken, the cross hands, the good companions, the trusty servant, the two-headed dog, the mermaid, the beehive, the king's head, 
the hole in the wall and the world's end so uh big big congratulations uh to uh anyone who got all 12 of those uh yes Ooh, um marcus says on the geek show that it's a japanese piece lead, not indian he's very sure of this he's very sure of this yeah um, right well I'm we might we might have to check that but okay it doesn't change the matter anyway, anyway. <laughs> have you definitely won alex i he have got 12 and a half points and i've got seven okay seven i mean seven's not bad no it's not seven's it's very okay, but 12 and a half i just remember very I, lost, I lost out there at the uh the world's end questions i think um yeah, I did see it yesterday. <laughs> oh, <that's> it. <laughs> and I saw it earlier this afternoon. So <laughs> I'm uh, well versed in uh, in the uh, in the the knowledge of of the world's end. Um, that was Thanks, fun, Marcus. right? Should we do more quizzes? Yeah, definitely. Let's do more quizzes in the future. Um, I think we should host cyclically. Cyclically. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, we'll maybe think about that later. Um, let us know what you got. Facebook.com slash csr csr Sorry. geek show geek, geek show, show CSR. csr i will learn it one of these there's days not, there's not that many geek shows and csrs and it? it's not a, <laughs> a mess of words it's guys i uh, i have to tell you something mm. it's uh it's time to uh stop the vote oh my god okay that's an alarm sound to say that it's time to stop the vote i like that i'm hoping for a win or a draw here so uh we're gonna uh our producer is gonna count the votes uh for us uh, while we talk about uh, this week's uh, retro corner feature, uh, James, over to you. I completely forgot about this, to be honest. <laughs> I was having too much fun with the quiz. Well, that's, I mean, that's good, right? We're yeah. having a good time. Right. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> Do you need me to vamp while you get it sorted? No, no, it's, it's, no? Up, it's up, it's up. Okay. Right, uh, well, this retro corner, well, I didn't, I missed last week's, which was. Oh, did you now? <laughs> 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 rings. Didn't notice. But this week, I'm going to be to asking you guys about remakes of films. Um, obviously there's remakes of games and things, but specifically films. Um, I'm just going to list a few films, and you guys give me your opinion if you think the original is better, or the remake. Okay. And if you've got a strong opinion about one of these films, then just, uh... Sure. This is where my embarrassingly thin knowledge comes through. <laughs> it's okay. If you don't know anything, just just blindly agree on one of them. Okay, Dawn of the Dead. Uh, I think... Original. I think the original, but I don't hate the remake. I yeah. do. Do you? Yeah. I found... I picked it up thinking, oh my god, I'm so excited, I finally get to watch this film. Got picked up the remake by mistake, watched oh it, and was like, this is I abysmal. I feel we have to do a swear word warning here, Alex. <laughs> Are so you going to be okay? No, I'm fine. It okay. was abysmal. That is, okay. I'm, 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 I'm That's holding it. That's a much it. better word than any swear word. <laughs> uh, I, I, I found <laughs> it was, it was superfluous to the film industry. It added nothing, and uh, it was just a waste of time. I, I prefer the uh, remake. Oh, interesting. I like both of them. But Let I, us know, by the way. Like, do do keep getting involved. We yeah. want to hear. We want to hear opinions and that. Um, and also, just because the show finishes at seven doesn't mean we we stop talking about these things. We can keep talking about them on Facebook. Um, we're, we're going to the pub after this to talk about this. Uh, going. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Uh, remake, definitely. Remake. Remake. Um, I find the kid who plays Charlie really creepy in the in the original. <laughs> so um, I really I don't really like. Johnny Depp so much, mm. but I love the sort of I love I'm how I love answer. how the remake looks visually, yeah. and I think the Umpa Lumpers are better. I just I genuinely just think it's a better film. I'm going to change my answer. I actually prefer the original. Mm. Fair enough. Mm. I don't like Johnny Depp. I remember every time I, I see him, I just don't like him. Do you he, actually, or have you just conformed to no, girlfriend no, pressure? He, he start. He I can't. She, she's doing things I can't see. I'm looking she's, at you. She's making angry faces oh, in the um, corner. Well, jo Johnny Depp just seems kind of. I, I never really liked him. I mean, he's good in some stuff, but I don't. Love him as a character. Not the Lone Ranger, by the way. Don't go and see the Lone Ranger. No. We had this conversation last week. <laughs> we did. <laughs> We're going to uh, say it every week. <laughs> Do not see the Lone oh, Ranger. That was no, that was Grown Ups 2 last week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what not to see with Joseph Lenton on CSR. Um, right. Um, King Kong. Oh, that's tough. Remake. Um, if you asked, if you asked Joe the, the geek, the normal guy who likes Peter Jackson, I'd say the remake. If you said Joe the film student, I'd mm. say the original. Because How about it's Joe? So, well, they're, they're two separate guys, really. Like, there's, <laughs> the, the guy that's just normal Joe is, would say probably the Peter Jackson one. But, art artistically, I can appreciate how important the original King Kong was. Yeah, uh, I, f I, th I think that's a, that's a very important film as well, but I also think that Jason the Argonauts done what that film done for the film industry slightly better. That's with true. The that's, awesome a fair, that's a very fair motion point. skeletons. Okay, um, Planet of the Apes. Oh my goodness <laughs> me, original! <laughs> I, I love the original. 
them. <clears throat> you haven't seen either of no. them? No. Okay, don't see the remake. The remake is a terrible okay, Tim yeah. Burton film. Um, on the it own. ends stupidly. Uh, Mark, Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg's rubbish in it. He doesn't even have the funky bunch. Um, he's <laughs> just... It's generally a really terrible I've, film. I've, I've seen the and bit in Simpsons that is uh, Planet of the Apes. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Yeah, Zayas, Dr. Zayas. That's <laughs> bet that, that little <laughs> segment is better than the entirety of the 2001 Planet of the Apes movie. Charlton Heston, uh, I don't agree with many of his personal views, but he's great in uh, the original. And the ending is so good. Um, the costumes are great. Yeah, no, definitely, original Planet of the Apes, definitely. definitely. What do you think of Rise of the Apes? Is I haven't of- seen it. Watch it, it's really good. It's really we good. We have gestures well, from Katie opinion. saying yay. Have you seen it, Alex? No. No? Okay, maybe we'll... Sequel we'll coming out soon. CSR right? Movie Nights, we'll do that. Plus, I love James Franco anyway. A sequel so. called Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> There's... It's something like Empire of the Planet of the Apes. It's another something of the Planet of the Apes. It's yeah. another really long-winded title. Okay. Return of the Jedi of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> 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 the Planet of the Apes would be like a hundred times better if Jedi were. If in Jedi it. were in it, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! I think anything can be improved by Jedi. Not the tangles. prequels. <laughs> 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 right. Okay. Now I'll, I'll name some films that are planning to be remade. Okay. So this isn't a hundred percent yet on probably some of them, but they're in the pipeline nonetheless. Somebody actually thought, you know what? I'm going to make a remake of this. Okay. Okay, and you you guys have to tell me if you think it would be a good idea or if it would be a terrible idea. Okay, okay all right. All right. RoboCop. Hells yeah. Great idea. Great idea? It'd I mean, be Robocop, RoboCop uh, was uh, the film above all others that scared me as a child, and it still scares me today. That, like, that weird machine at the start of the movie... Mm. Um, terrifies me. I, I, ju- I get a little bit uncomfortable just thinking about it. Um, chills. So I look forward to being frightened all over again and as, as an my, adult. My girlfriend would completely and utterly disagree with you. When I told her this, she was so disgusted. <laughs> she loves Robocop. I mean, Ro- Ro- Robocop's cool and everything, but I don't have any... Obj- oh, no, hang on. No, because I've seen the new costume, because they're making oh, it right. now. I've seen the new costume and it's terrible, so I'm going to change my answer <laughs> to no. No new Robocop. I think if they make it exactly like the community Turn spoof Hollywood. kick puncher, I would watch it more. If if they made a kick punch movie, I'd oh, watch it. I would kick punch okay. <laughs> Death Note. Um, yeah, I don't like it anyway. No, nah, I'm not really fussed. Yeah, no? I, with Alex, I'm not really super fussed on it. So yeah, I, I love, love Death Note. Note. I like I, some anime, but Death Note was way too a, slow. It's being remade, obviously, for an American audience. For an American so audience. Yes. Like Old Boy, is, mm. uh, which is which is a great Korean film, and it's being made remade by Spike Lee, and it's got Josh Brolin in. And I love Josh Brolin, Josh Brolin but I don't know how it's going to be better than the original. The original's an amazing film. Um, Starship Troopers. Oh, no. It doesn't and need a remake. It doesn't need a remake. Because it was a commentary yes. on Vietnam. What's this going to be a commentary on? Um, well, I don't think... I'd, we probably shouldn't get into politics <laughs> no, out here. No, let's but, not, um, but, like... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think it was a good enough film, and I think you're right. It's it, You don't need to make a remake right. of it, because it's, mm. it's fine. It's supposed to be kind of B-movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the idea. I think, you, I think my brothers at home right now would be screaming, No, don't remake it! Um, they're probably listening there. They like Starship <laughs> Troopers. Uh, it would make, make a pretty fun game. Like Maybe, that, if yeah. you want to remake it, make it into a game. There we go, Hollywood. If you want to remake Starship Troopers, Alex Branson's got the idea for you. Just hire me, please. The Never Good Ending job. Story. No. no. They're not remake. Are they no. remaking The Never Ending Story? Apparently. But they don't need to remake it. It's never ending. It's never ending. <laughs> never that, so, ending. a never ending story. What are they going to call it? The <laughs> continuing story? <laughs> like, or coming in 2015, here's some more of the never ending story. I'd be open to that if they were going to just keep going. If they were going <laughs> to. If they were going to tell more never-ending story, I would be fine. But, but they're just going to remake it and retell if they story reboot, again. If they rebooted the whole thing, then no. Okay. Uh, this one's been on the cards for a long time. Akira. Yeah, again. Um, <laughs> see, I love Akira. I think Akira's probably my favourite non-Studio uh, Ghibli uh, anime film. I think it's an absolute work of art. I would say no. Um, I don't think it would work. Uh, I don't think... It it should be remade. I think it's I think it's a perfect example of how animation can yeah, be definitely. used in a violent, surreal, cool way um, for adults. I no, I I you appreciate it more when it's kind of drawn like that, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's and they're also with animation, and this is something um, that animation writers such as those on The Simpsons talk about all the time. Is that there are just things you can do with animation that you can't do. Um, without using loads of CGI, like some some mm. things you just cannot do um, with without animation. One particular Simpsons thing comes to mind, and I guarantee my brother Nick at home is laughing his head off right now because he knows exactly what I'm on about. Um, 
but yeah, it's. I just think without without. If it, is it, is it going to be live action? Is the remake going to be live I action? I assume so. Yeah, I would have thought so. Um, yeah, if it's if it's live action, then no, absolutely not. I refuse uh, okay. to. Uh, right, the birds. Yes, I don't. I, I hate the birds. Same. I mean, it's so boring. I don't think it's scary. I think um, I think it's probably my least favourite Hitchcock it's film I've seen. Yeah, no, I don't like the birds. It's no. and it's aged poorly. So if and they it's were going to, I mean, the idea is great. Like Hitchcock's got a great idea, but unfortunately, his film is just sort of is limited uh, by the times. So okay, I'll, I'll do you want me to? Yeah, do one more quickly. Okay, right, short circuit. No. Uh, didn't they already do that? And it was called Wally. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, I don't. I don't think it's necessary because that film was beautiful and wonderful in its own right, and, and it continued to exist in that way. I think the general consensus we can make here is that um, is that if a film is great in its own right, then there's no need to reboot and remake it, right? Definitely. Number yeah. five uh, is a lie. Um, quick, one quick thing. Um, a little bit of news can, uh, to do with remakes. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe said that if they were to remake Harry Potter. He would be completely willing to play his Harry Potter's father, James Potter. That'd that would be, cool. be very interesting. He said he would never play Harry Potter again if there was a sequel made or something. Or I prequel. think they should remake the Harry Potter. He, what yes. Harry Potter and the Midlife Crisis? Yeah, <laughs> he said he would never do that, uh, which I respect him for because he's he's try trying to build his career outside. But he said that he would play James Potter. Interesting. Oh, that's nice. Okay, right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, that was Retro Corner for this week. Hmm. Uh, right, it is time to announce. Uh, the results oh. of the uh, of the the play us out feature. Now uh, I can see from our producer. Ro oh, he's 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 going over to the microphone. He's going to do it himself. Rob, tell us uh, tell us the uh, the results of the vote. Well, <laughs> let's just say Transformers has got five votes. Pokemon has got three votes. <sighs> just three. I've I've lost this. I'm speechless. <laughs> and Red Dwarf. Six votes, so hey! Red Dwarf is Six one. Six votes, Red Dwarf yes. is the winner! Uh, right, is that all from us today? Oh, I'm... I believe it is. Uh, right, okay, uh, let us, uh, leave you, uh, this afternoon, uh, with, uh, blimey, the Red Dwarf soundtrack. I did Thank not you. see that one coming. Uh, thanks for listening, uh, we'll be back, uh, next week, same time, same place. Uh, if you enjoyed listening to the show, make sure you check us out on, uh, on Facebook, which is... Geek Show, see us. Oh. There we go. I'll learn it for next week. I promise you that. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I've been Joe Lennon. He's been Alex Branson. Hello. He's been James Bye, Miller. Ellie. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Geek Show. Thank Have a great listening. evening. Bye-bye. The Geek Show on CSR 97.4.